CataractCoach.com. Cataract surgery and conductive keratoplasty. How does prior CK alter the IOL calculations for cataract surgery? So take a look carefully at this cornea. You can see there are eight spots there. Those are the spots from the conductive keratoplasty. It was a refractory procedure from about 20 years ago, around the year 2000, where a little electrode was used to cause focal little burns in the cornea. And those peripheral eight burns would serve to steepen the central cornea and therefore add corneal power. And this was done typically in the non-dominant eye of a patient, let's say a plano presbyope, in order to induce uh, some more near vision. So if you increase the corneal power from, let's say, 43 diopters to 44 diopters, you had about a diopter increase or refractive shift there. And so these patients uh, could do very well initially. The effect tended to wear off with time. Now, sometimes you'll see 16 spots, and it's basically still the um, eight spots there, but two rings of it. So this patient, as you probably guessed, is a little bit hyperopic. The patient was a latent hyperope. So the patient had, in his mid-40s, he had the conductive keratoplasty done in order to help dial in a little bit more of a myopic shift in the refractive area of this, his non-dominant eye. So the question is, well, how does this change the lens calculations? Is it different from hyperopic LASIK? Well, it is, because think about this. In hyperopic LASIK, what you're doing is you're doing that donut-shaped ablation, right, to the anterior corneal stroma. And as we know, that creates that steepening centrally, but uh, epithelial cells can fill in the hyperopic LASIK part, that ablation area, so you can, your effect will wear off. So example, if you give someone a plus 150 hyperopic ablation, it may back down to about a plus one after all the healing is said and done. But the LASIK only changes the front of the cornea, not the back surface of the cornea, right? Think about that. Whether you're hyperopic or myopic LASIK, you're changing the curvature of the front cornea. You're not affecting the, the posterior curvature. Now think about radial keratotomy, RK. That changes both front and back curvatures. And you know what? CK also, it more so changes the anterior surface of the cornea, but it does have an effect on the posterior surface as well. And so as a result, what are you going to do for lens calcs here? Well, first thing you want to do is use a formula that's going to take into account anterior chamber depth. You don't want to use an older formula like a Holiday One or a Hopper Q or SRKT because those don't need the anterior chamber depth to do the lens calculations. They assume the anterior chamber depth based on the keratometry measurements, axial length, etc. So use a more modern formula. I like Lattice Super Formula. You can use Barrett. You can use... Um, hey, guess any of these are all reasonable because they actually require you to input an anterior chamber depth. So the corneal power is not going to be used to determine AC depth. You actually have a measured AC depth. So that's step one. Step two is, remember, these patients tend to have hyperopia on the brain. They've been hyperopic their whole lives. That's why they had CK done. Like this patient, a latent hyperope. Probably was about a plus two hyperope, a latent hyperope. And then when the CK was done, this eye shifted. And to, let's say, about a plus a half or plus one hyperope. Patient at 45 still had some accommodation, a, a reasonable amount. So then this eye was able to do great reading while the other eye, which was not touched, was able to use that residual accommodation to dial in the distance vision. So in this patient, look at both eyes together and compare. Usually the CK is only done to the one eye, like in this situation. And in this situation, you want to compare the two eyes and see what are the differences in corneal powers. Now, using a device that reads that central three millimeter, well, uh, of the cornea, whether it's a keratometry or other device, look at the difference. And so in this patient, the K value in this eye was about 0.75 diopters steeper than the K value in the other untouched eye. So we are going to put into this patient a trifocal lens. Now, obviously, that's what the patient wants. And instead of aiming for any um, like perfect planar result, we're going to aim just a, a little bit of hyperopia. So aiming for about a plus a quarter, maybe even plus 0.3 to 0.4. And then that's going to allow this patient to have a very close outcome to that amatropia. So I aimed here plus a quarter, patient ended up just about perfect plano and was very happy with this trifocal lens. And then obviously the other eye, which was untouched, very easy to just do your standard calculations here. So again, bottom line is for conductive keratoplasty, it changes mostly, mostly the front curvature of the cornea, but also to a degree the posterior surface of the cornea. You want to measure that central three millimeters of that eye and do a comparison there. And then if you're doing a trifocal lens like this, aim for maybe just a plus, a quarter, 
And that'll be probably enough of a shift there because you're measuring the true corneal power. And then you can also do some simple math in your head. Again, if this eye has a refraction different than the other eye and that not too much cataract like you have here, so it's not a myopic shift from a cataract. If this eye, let's say, has a refraction of plus one, the other eye has a refraction of plus 175, this eye has a corneal power that's 0.75 higher, well, now it all makes sense, correct? And so using those kind of guidelines here, you can figure out what to do for your patient, and I'm sure you'll have a nice outcome like this. And I made this video because I've had a former resident email me recently and ask, hey, I've got a patient with conductive keratoplasty coming up. How am I going to do the lens calculations? He also did the same uh, bit of advice and calculated in the same way and had a great result. Thanks for watching.